Hey everybody and welcome back to the next part in my creating a quick great tone series where I make a shorter more condensed version of some of the topics that I created longer versions of in the create a great tone series and today I'm going to cover one question that I see asked a lot talked about a lot and I get asked personally and that is how can I level my presets so that when I'm moving between snapshots everything is kind of a consistent volume and feels right transitions nicely how can I level my presets so they're all the same volume level? How do I level between clean and overdrive and so on and so forth? And what output level should I have coming out of the Helix? These are all questions that I see asked a lot. And there's also some misinformation that floats around sometimes about. So let's take a look. I'm going to show you how I take care of these issues. My simple steps that I use to pretty much have a foolproof plan to keep our tone intact and to have everything working really well and everything nice and balanced. So without further ado, let's dive over to Cubase and HX Edit. All right, so here we are over in HX Edit. I have a little preset built here based off of the normal template I use. I have a little Alley Studio comp at the end. I have that in there for a very particular reason. A little EQ block, a reverb block, a vintage digital delay, and I use that one for very specific reasons. I have a little low and high shelf, and I have a Matchstick Channel 2 amp going into a 212 Match G25 cab. And I have two little presets set up, very simple. I didn't really spend much time dialing these in, just more as an example, clean and OD. I don't know how clean this is actually going to be, but just two dr different dramatic kind of changes within the amp block. And I also have a little looper set up that we are going to utilize very shortly for some examples. So I think the first and most important point I have to make in this video is we have to keep in mind that there are many places that we can boost or cut the volume level of our presets. And for instance, if we go through this a block at a time, we have the channel volume of the amp block. We have the level control of our cab block. We have a level control on our low and high shelf. We have a level control on our vintage digital, a level control on our room reverb. We have a level control on our parametric EQ, and we have a level control on our LA Studio Comp as well as a final output level. So people look at this and go, what do I do with these? And do they affect the tone? Well, one thing we really need to know is that those level controls are not going to affect the tone of the block we're using them in, okay? These are just the final output level of this block, but what it can potentially do is affect the tone of the next block that it's going to be feeding or blocks after that one. We have two types of blocks on the Helix. We have linear blocks and non-linear blocks when we're talking from an audio standpoint. Now, what a linear block is, is it's not going to change its behavior or its tone based off of how much input signal it's receiving. So if we crank the input into this room reverb, it's just gonna give us the same room reverb. Uh, everything's just gonna sound louder, but it's not like the room reverb's going to distort or have a different behavior. Uh, if we feed more input into a stock cab block, this is a linear block. It's not gonna break up more. The speaker's not gonna have any extra distortion. It's just gonna be louder. What is different than that are some non-linear blocks. Things like the vintage digital where by design, if we hit it with more input level, there's a built-in emulation within it that's going to digitally clip, and that's by design. Things like compressors, the LA Studio Comp, the more signal we hit them with coming into the front end of them, the more compression we're gonna get. So if we have dialed our sound in just as we like it, but find maybe it's all a little too low, or that we have to balance our snapshots, and we start adjusting our volume level, let's say, before the LA Studio Comp, which we've had dialed in just perfectly, well, if we boost volume going into that, we're going to get more compression out of it and we're going to change its behavior. If we pull back and put less level going into it, we're going to change its behavior again and maybe the compressor is not doing as much as it was. Maybe it's not even compressing at all anymore. So these are very important things to keep in mind. So one of the safest places to do your leveling and balancing would be your final output block. Now, the reason for this is simply that it's happening after everything else in the chain. If I boost the volume here, it's not going to affect anything to do with the vintage digital or the compressor or any other non-linear blocks within the preset. So that's a great place to do our leveling. 
Let's go back though and talk a little bit about the AMP model because this is a very important question I've seen asked many times and I've been asked personally as well many times. Obviously, if we come up to the drive control on this AMP and we boost it, it's going to give us more distortion. That is controlling the preamp distortion of the AMP block. People ask, well, the master and the channel volume, which one would I use just to control the volume? And this is an extremely important point. The master volume control is essentially setting the behavior of the virtual power tubes within our amp model. So this is going to dramatically change the behavior of the amp. Now I have a little loop set up here and I'm also going to go to snapshot two and I'm going to play this little loop and I'm going to adjust the master volume and listen to how the characteristics of the distortion and the behavior of the amp changes. <laughs> You hear more saturation when it's pushing and that's the sound of those power tubes breaking up versus if I use the channel volume. You can hear that when I move the master volume control down, we get a different characteristic to the distortion. We get less distortion. When I move the channel volume down, we simply just make the amp quieter. So the simple answer to this question is, which do we use to just simply balance the volume without affecting our tone? It is the channel volume. That is the final output of that particular amp. It's not going to affect the behavior of the preamp tubes or the power amp tubes. The master volume control will affect your tone and will change your tone. So that's something we must keep in mind. So if you had a perfect preset set up in the tone you want and you wanted to just control the output level of your amp model, you would do it with the channel volume. And this is one thing that I do a lot. So let's say that we were set up here on our clean channel and uh, I'm going to play our little loop. I'm going to turn our delay on and I'm going to set the amount of compression that I want. Now when I look down at the meters on my Helix for the amount of compression I'm getting out of the LA Studio Comp, Right there, I'm getting a couple dB of compression, which is fine. Let's go with that for now. Everything seems to be behaving all right. There may be a little bit of edge of distortion going on on the vintage digital delay. Uh, so what I can do is I could say, well, I need to know what my final output is going to be on this. And I can take now the integrated loudness meters over here on Cubase. You can see I'm recording my guitar and my vocals on this, but I have my guitar soloed so that the integrated loudness meters are only reading off of this. Now you might say, well, what's an integrated loudness meter? Well, this is an LUFS meter. Now in the, the previous video I did, I talked about using a version. It's a free version. It's available online called Orban loudness meter. I'll try to remember to put the link to that below. It works beautifully for the same thing. Uh, for shooting this video, I have no choice but to use Cubase 12 Pro's version because it's built in and that's how I'm shooting this video. So what you'll see is I'll aim for usually in the range of anywhere from minus 17 to minus 19, maybe shooting for about minus 18. Now you might ask why I shoot for that. Well, I find that it gives me enough headroom that I'm not going to be close to clipping other devices in the chain, right? If I'm plugging into a live soundboard, I don't want to overload that and distort it. Uh, if I'm feeding a power cab, I do want to give it enough signal to be healthy signal, maximize signal to noise ratio. So we want to get the healthiest signal coming out of the helix without potentially clipping or distorting anything after the helix, such as a live soundboard or an FRFR speaker. So if I play this now, this loop on our little clean setting here, let's see, I have the channel volume at 10, I have the final output on zero, let's see what we get on our integrated loudness meter.
it finally ends up settling somewhere around minus 14.6. So now what will happen here is if I come in and use the channel volume to bring that down so that let's say it's around the minus 18 level. And you know what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to scoot this over like so. We can't keep losing HX edit. So um, I could come over here and bring the channel volume down with no problem. And then we'll relook at our LUFS meter. Now that's much more acceptable. Now I have to now go check and see how that is behaving with my compressor because I had already set the amount of compression. I was getting about 2 dB of compression. So let's check that again. Now I'm barely getting any compression. So if this is the level that we've decided to set it at, now I want to go back in, play this again and get my compression back to where I want it by using my peak reduction control. And that gets me back where I was. Now we can check our integrated loudness again. Now you can see because of this final bit of compression that I put that now this has changed our integrated loudness. So I could always come to the output here and utilize this as well. So I could say I lost the dB. I'm going to add another dB in right over here. And that gets me back where I want to be. So that's wonderful. So that works nicely. We could leave that alone. Now, what I will do is I'll come and I'll activate channel volume to be able to be controlled by snapshots. And I'm also going to do the same thing, our final output level. So here's what's going to happen now. If I go to my overdrive snapshot, we now have potentially a different volume. I've cranked a bunch more gain into this. It's going to be a heavier tone. We have our channel volume set the same as it was for our clean, but I don't know. Let's see how this works on our integrated loudness meter with that same loop. And the really important point about using the looper like this is we can actually hear the exact same performance and we know it's a consistent volume. Now, something interesting here. We're up about 2 dB. Now, that should be hitting our compressor harder as well. So... If I come back to my compressor and take a look at the gain reduction meters here when I play this little loop. I am getting a little tiny bit more compression. So at this point, then I could come back to my channel volume and control the overall volume with my channel volume. If I do it here, it's going to affect the behavior of our compressor. If I do it here, it's not. So this is really the juggling act that we have to use. But as long as we're aware of it and we know that if I change anything before the compressor, it's going to affect the amount of compression. If I don't want to change that and I'm happy with the way this is sounding and working out, I come after it. So I could simply come here and say for snapshot two, I'm going to pull this back by a couple dB. And let's see what that does in our LUFS meter. That fixes the problem. Let's listen to how that balances between snapshot one and two. Not terrible. Now, again, there's a really important point to make here. This is really going to be a lot up to personal preference. Um, it, do we want our overdrive sound a little bit louder? Do we want it a little bit quieter? Do we want our clean sound to pop out a little bit more and a little bit louder? We're going to have to make those final adjustments and decisions based on our own needs and our own personal preference. I find using the LUFS meter gets us in that ballpark very quickly, but ultimately you have to use your ears after that to make sure everything's dialed in to how it makes you feel comfortable when you're playing. And everybody's probably going to dial this type of thing in a little bit different. Now, let's come over here, though, and say we're not going to do it here. Let's just keep the final output block. Let's come back and use the channel volume on the amp. So I'm going to play this again. You'll see that the integrated allowance should jump back up to around minus 17. But I'm going to use my channel volume now to adjust this.
you can now see we're, we're closer. So if we listen to the difference between those two snapshots now. It works balance wise, but keep in mind now we're getting a different amount of compression because we've changed the volume before the compressor. So is there a right and a wrong? Nope, it's whatever works best for you as long as you're aware of how every change you make in your signal chain is going to potentially affect something else in our signal chain. Now the reason I put the vintage digital into it is I want to show you a little bit more along the lines of this linear versus non-linear. So you take something like the vintage digital, let's say I came along and thought, I don't really know what I'm doing, but the low and high shelf EQ here seems like a good place to potentially boost my volume. And we have our vintage digital delay on and we're playing our loop. Watch what happens as I boost the level right before the vintage digital. Even though we're not clipping within Cubase, we're not even close to it. We're getting clipping from the vintage digital. You notice when I turn it off, it's gone. We're still within a range here that's fine for the DAW. Now there is a way within this to handle it with the uh, headroom control. But the point being is that this is a non-linear effect and the amount of signal we send into it can potentially affect it in a negative way. You'll see that if I zero this back off to where it was and I make that same boost after the vintage digital delay, let's say at the reverb, I'm now going to affect obviously my compression, but I'm not going to affect the vintage digital anymore. So I just wanted to show that example to show how careful we have to be to send only the right amount of signal into certain effects blocks, or we will have the potential at least for some negative behavior from the effects block. A lot of folks ask me, where do you keep your big volume knob on your Helix? And my answer is always, it's always on full. There's a reason for this. That is considered basically unity gain on the Helix. I wanna make all my controls from within the preset itself. If I have properly set up my levels and left some headrooms so that I'm getting a nice healthy signal coming out of the helix I'll never really need to boost the level more I'm getting enough signal to pretty much handle every situation and if I'm not I can just simply come in and boost more at my output level on my preset but if I am playing live and maybe for some reason there's some sort of clipping that's been introduced that it's too hot I can always reach down and just tweak the big volume knob back a little bit but I seldom have to do that if I have just simply done the proper job in leveling my presets first. So what do you guys think? I hope I covered everything I wanted to in there. Um, you know, it's really not that big a deal. If you have a DAW with an LUFS meter, a loudness units full scale meter, we can use that integrated meter uh, using a loop or a piece of audio we recorded into our different snapshots to set the level, to get it in the ballpark. And all I'm saying is that's gonna get us in the ballpark to where we have to be. Ultimately, like I mentioned before, we need to use our ears after and just our own preferences to get everything just to where we want it. And it does take a little bit of tweaking, but we also have to know where in that chain to do the tweaking so that it's not potentially changing the sound of our preset or the behavior of certain effects blocks. So I hope that that was helpful, I really do. And I hope that that answers some questions and I hope that that helps you to be able to go to your presets and get them set up in exactly the way that you want them and need them to work. Thank you guys again so much for tuning in. Please like the video, share it with anybody who you think would get some use out of watching it. Also, please subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. I'll be back really soon with some more. Thank you guys again so much for tuning in. Ciao for now.